brought to you by EP Wealth. This is The Rob Black Show. Let's talk about what's working and not working. How to get you to retirement, some hints, tips, tricks, what have you. Home prices, to me, are the 800-pound gorilla in the room that no one wants to talk about. Stock prices fall. We've experienced that in 2022. We've seen things that we consume rise in value. Inflation, which is negative for the consumer because we're consuming them. But home prices, if you talk to realtors, I don't think they're your best source of information. I would prefer you go with an economist. But I get it. Realtors are going to have that real estate always goes up and it doesn't. And you can look at tax records and that'll figure it out for you. Morgan Stanley recently said that it expects home prices to drop by 7% between now and December 2023. I think that's a fair throwdown. If you see what you've gotten in home appreciation in the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, I'll take that. I own homes. I get it. But here's the tricky part. I own some homes that went up way more than the national average. Because the state that I live in. So I'm expected home prices to drop 10 to 20% from all-time highs. And I'm not going to even say drop because I still live in it. It's not like it fell into the sea. If predictions come true for a 7% pullback in home prices, it would be the second largest decline in housing prices since the Great Depression. So Morgan Stanley saying 7% is the second largest decline in housing prices since the Great Depression can, and I think should happen. The average family has two household finance buckets. We have income and we have spending. Money comes into the income bucket from your job, from your passive investments like exchange-traded funds and dividends, freelance gigs that you do. Maybe a small business you started on the side. That income goes to pay for all your fixed and variable expenses, the mortgage or the rent checks. You're typically the biggest fixed expense for American households. We know that affordability in all things financial has been decreasing, but especially in the housing or rental environments especially when you have to try to save for a down payment. If you're renting and interested in buying a house, the upside of a falling prices is that you're going to be able to find your dream home for less. The downside is that the home prices that you're carrying costs will be much higher due to the increased mortgage rates. For the renter, the savings are very, 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 very fleeting. For the mortgage-free homeowner who doesn't plan on moving, Circumstances don't change. However, the household that's been considering refinancing won't nearly be as enthusiastic with higher interest rates. So you can see how higher interest rates and supply and demand and falling prices are going to affect people from different angles. My homes that I own that have appreciated more so than the market has have mortgages on them, so they have fixed costs. I've budgeted enough money to last three years of fixed cost in my life. Doesn't mean I want it to happen, but it could. Home prices in the stock market, there is a tie, just like there are a tie, there is a tie, in my opinion, between Bitcoin and the NASDAQ. The current environment of rising interest rates, falling home prices, and high inflation is a triple whammy because it makes it that much harder for the average saver to come up with funds to invest. The Great Recession, which lasted from 2007 to 2009, is when we saw the last 
stock market to influence the housing market. Part of the way I got into this home was an enthusiastic stock market. Sold some shares of Apple to diversify. Probably sold some other shares of stuff, but Apple's the easiest one to make into an example. As it was my largest holding. So getting a diversification into real estate from stock market appreciation. Now I'd be like, you know what? I'm probably going to hold on to that stock. Household wealth fell by approximately 16.4 trillion from the first quarter of 2007 to this first quarter of 2009, two years after the official end of the recession. Americans barely regained 50% of their lost wealth. So some of the housing deflation that we're likely to see is going to be a little bit stingy. I almost regret looking at my home prices on a monthly basis last year. Keep in mind, I bought. And 14 months later, I'm like, well, 10 months later, I'm like, woohoo, I'm up, you know, 20% already. And I was like, that's not going to last. In the back of my head, don't, don't celebrate, Rob. It's not going to, and it didn't last. So given back a lot of the last year's gain, but does that sound so terrible? Oh no, my housing portfolio is down to 2021 levels. That doesn't sound so terrible. It can and should get much worse. But again, my fixed costs on mortgages, I'll be okay. So the interesting thing right now is there's a lot of people professionally acting in an environment that have never, ever been in this environment. What do I mean by that? Mortgage rates are at a 20-year high. And a friend of mine, Tony Mendez, Bay Area Loan Source, has a show on the station. He told me as much. He's like, I've never been in an environment where mortgage rates are this high. I'm like, good for you. (laughs) Was that the right thing to say? Am I being a friend? And no, I wasn't being a friend. Um, Calls are sketchy and minimal. Um, There's just fewer and farther between. But a lot of the people you've worked with, whether it's a financial planner, whether it's a mortgage lender, whether it's a real estate agent, they've never been in this environment. Just keep that in the back of your mind. 800-516-1220 to each calls on the air. Anything you want to talk about, money, invested or more, we can talk about. We will talk about the strategies that work in a bear market. Um, I still feel this market is not done bottoming until we get job cuts. Or job cuts that go like, wow, wasn't expecting that big of a job cut. Or you get a Fed that says, you know what? No. We're going to take a look. we're going to take a little time and see what's happening here. Right now, the expectation is they raise 75 basis points two more times this year. One minute. That's the, like, the, the I guess you'd call it the bearish case. So when does the stock market put in its bottom? When the Fed pivots? When inflation falls in a CPI number to 4%? Maybe it doesn't have to go that low. But a lot of people are expecting deflation to hit hard and fast and furious. It typically doesn't work that way. But we are seeing some economic data points being falling prices in food, which should instantly start helping the restaurants and their stocks. Will we keep the full in, in the full job market, at full employment? I don't know. Because that's where we are now. I would like to see it go away. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money, investing, and more. I don't mind a bad year on Wall Street. 
I don't look at things as a zero sum game. I look at it as I'll probably be an investor for 40 years of my life, maybe 50, if I'm lucky, 60. And there's going to be bad years. When you, we, when you put it in those terms, that makes a little bit of sense. I know it's your retirement, and I know you're emotional about losing paper percentages. I want stress. I'd have a better plan, if anything. CFP Chad Burton and myself will be doing an event coming up on the 17th of November in the Elks Lodge in Palo Alto. You can sign up for the event. It's about income and retirement. It's about showing you how CFPs work and how to set up portfolios and draw down rates. You can learn more about the event at website Rob Black Show. That's coming up in under a month. First live event for me in two plus years. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a little emotional. It's filling up nicely. So use the code event25 to get in at website robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. There was a big rally on Wall Street during a bear market. Those happen. Sometimes we're going to call them bear market rallies. Sometimes we're going to call them dead cat bounces. The bear market is feeling the squeeze right now. Very rarely do you go straight down and very rarely do you go straight up on Wall Street. I like bottoms that are kind of like figured out, not that are cute and quick. Um, it's like if you're an alcoholic and you have a bad day and you end up on top of a toilet, you you haven't hit rock bottom yet. Nope. Nope. That's when you show up at your kid's school and demand to see him screaming. I don't know what TV show this is from, but it has to be from something, right? You have to hit rock bottom. And I just don't feel the stock market has hit rock bottom. Where you have a Jim Cramer freak out that goes viral on the internet, where you have a Bank of England fail on a debt payment or something dramatic. There's a great CEO, Goldman Sachs CEO, David Solomon. Goldman Sachs is one of just the greatest brands ever. It is a Tiffany network. When you think of things along the lines of like Apple and Rolex, you're not too far behind when you say Goldman Sachs is a brand. Their CEO, and they made a huge mistake in my opinion. They got into the consumer market with what's called Marcus, a great product, great product. But it's it's discounting their pricing. And when you work with a Goldman Sachs, you work there because they're all that in a bucket of chicken. And it's a way of showing your friends like, hey, I'm wealthy. CEO of Goldman Sachs is out there today saying, there's a pretty good chance of a recession, so be ready for it. We've already heard that from others in this environment. J.B. Diamond. Warning of looming trouble for the U.S. economy. Now, yesterday, Bank of America CEO, Ryan Moynihan, said the consumer's in pretty great shape. Consumer credit remains pristine. Customer account balances remain higher than before the coronavirus pandemic. Total transactions are up 6%. The bill of the transactions are up 10%, but that's probably due to inflation. But I will tell you, when there's... When CNBC or Bloomberg says, coming up, we're going to be interviewing the CEO of CNB of Goldman Sachs, I stop what I'm doing. When I hear Jamie Dimon's going to be around talking, I stop what I'm doing. And it, it's cliche, but it is what it is. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon warned that the U.S. economy might be headed for a downturn that could make investing business decisions a little bit more difficult. I think it's time to be cautious. I think that if you're running a risk-based business, it's time to think more cautiously about your risk box. I think you have to expect that there's more volatility on the horizon. That doesn't mean for sure that we'll have really difficult economic scenarios play out. 
But on distributions of outcomes, there's a good chance that we have a recession in the United States. So when you see a rally right now, are you selling? Are you raising a little bit of cash to have more if there's another downturn? Are you looking at the things that have been massive underperformers instead of waiting for them to get break even? You're looking at them as a source of funds so you can get them lower? I don't know. I'm not giving you your strategy. I'm giving you what I see as a bear market strategy. The Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates aggressively. And again, they haven't broken very much yet. But when David Solomon and Jamie Dimon talk, I listen. Susie Orman, not so much. Robert Kiyosaki, no. I, I can't even hear him. He's like one of those bad horror movie cliches where he's screaming and you can see that he's screaming, but you can't hear the actual scream. Solomon said something that I want to repeat once, twice, maybe three times. In an environment where inflation is more embedded and growth is slower, you know, asset appreciation will be tougher. It's that simple. In an environment where inflation is more embedded and growth is slower, you know, asset appreciation is going to be tougher. He said public policy in areas including energy and immigration will be important to determine how well the U.S. is enable or able to navigate through its challenges. So he's looking at energy and immigration as two very important areas. His last quote in his appearance was, can we find ways to do things that allow us to invest in our society in a way that makes it easier to shift this? I don't, ha I don't have answers for that, but I'm certainly going to focus on it. If you're a risk manager right now, I think you have to prepare for a more difficult environment in 2023. One minute. Don't cry next year because he's already warning you. Bring a box of tissues. It's going to be tough. Is your portfolio ready? Bring it out. Take an eyeball. Look at what CFP, Chad Burton, EP Wealth do. At an event coming up in November, the Thursday before Thanksgiving. I know. It's a little cliche. It's going to be in Palo Alto at the X-Lodge. You can sign up at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Use the code EVENT25. Um, and it basically waves the fees for you, which is pretty sweet. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, more. Find me online at robblackshow.com. Don't want to work forever? Check out the retirement planning guide on robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. Headlines like this are a nice reminder that don't get too caught up in the day-to-day. -day. Economist Neural Rubini. Quote, in some sense, World War III has already started. President Vladimir Putin's refusal to rule out tactical nuclear weapons in Russia's war against Ukraine put much of the world on edge last month. And the economist Nuriel Rubini says a nuclear escalation of that nearly eight-month conflict could mark just the start of a global battle. He's known as Dr. Doom in the world of the economists. He's been more wrong than right about almost everything that he's ever said in his career. But we still pay attention. And it's a headline that's unnerving, isn't it? My children aren't being drafted. I don't have a stress in the world about that. But he's saying maybe you should. I'm like, meh, meh, your career doesn't really add up to that. But we'll see. But it adds uncertainty. Social Security colas for 2023 are the largest adjustment in decades due to inflation. This is good news and bad news. Good news if you're in retirement, you're getting an 8.7% raise to try to keep you hanging with inflation. Bad news is your grandchildren are going to be paying for that for years, and we're going to continue to watch Social Security fail as an economic policy. It's supposed to help people who fall through the cracks. It barely does that. I could arguably say it doesn't do it. The amount of money that we've put into Social Security in our lifetime through your paycheck, through your W-2, is not gotten a great return. And I would prefer the U.S. government say, 
Rob Black's children, when you turn 18 and you earn money, you don't have to give us social security, but when you turn 60, we're not giving you social security. We're not going to tax you in your work lifetime. Don't you wish kind of like the system doesn't work like this, but it's fun thinking things like if I die before 60, can I get some of my social security money back for my, my children? Nope. Not how it works. Unless they're minor dependents, but it does kind of work that way. Throwing that down there for you. Um, what do we want to talk about at this point in time? I think we've hit all the major big stories. I think one way that we should hit again is Goldman Sachs CEO David Sullivan says there's a good chance of recession, so it's time to be cautious. He and Jamie Dimon have said the same thing, that there's a looming recession, likely. They're not saying definitively. Um, what I want you to know about that is be ready for it. I've got a friend who's leaving, who's quiet quitting right now and has money, is comfortable, has time, wants to look around. But this time next year, we're probably going to be in a recession, according to two of the top Wall Street bankers. And it'll be a little bit tougher to get a job. So just make sure your time frame's 18 months and not instant gratification. Netflix is going to kick off earnings tech season tonight. Subscriber growth is a big question. Their last two quarters, it hit bad. But to counter that, Netflix has unveiled the details of its new ad-supported subscription tier, $6.99 a month. It's going to be called Basic with Ads. It's going to include four to five minutes per hour of advertising. It's $3 cheaper than the company's basic plan and a dollar a month cheaper than the new ad-supported tier on Walt Disney. There seems to be a rush between Netflix and Disney to get this new tier out because we're kind of over, we've got too many subscriptions. Subscription fatigue. It's fun to watch from a distance is cable TV used to have this thing that we all hated, but we played by it because we had to, where you wanted HBO and watched Sex in the City with Sarah Jessica Parker. You had to pay for a year. Otherwise, they're going to hit you with back fees if you canceled. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you watch the show and it's disappointing. And there's nothing else coming up anytime soon that you're interested in. Now, that doesn't necessarily work with HBO as the example. But I can tell you, like Paramount Plus, um, in my household, it's we get it when we want to watch something. We turn it off the moment we're done watching it. Too many subscription services. For the record, um, I do like Truebill. It is an app that has changed its name to Rocket Money, which I do not like. Um, but I do like the service where it'll scan your monthly bills on your bank account and tell you what how many subscriptions you have. Sometimes it misses and doesn't get it correctly. Um, but it, it sees, oh, you've got two mortgages. It recommends a mortgage to you. It sees, oh, you've got five subscription plans. It's, it, it tells you, hey, I'll call Sierra Satellite Radio and I'll cancel your plan or I'll get you a cheaper plan. But you're going to give me 30% of whatever I save you. You're like, oh, great. I'll just sit here and click this button and save some money. And you can have some of it too. You're too lazy to call a cable company yourself and negotiate. Uh huh. They'll do it for you. And the cable company is all, all too happy because it keeps you on a subscription, right? That's very visible, and they don't have to go out and replace you. Like Paramount Plus is going to have to replace me because I'm not going to stick around. It's not a streaming service that I want, other than for one month at a time. Carry over momentum today from yesterday's stock market rally. It's nice to see. Better than expected earnings from Goldman Sachs and Johnson & Johnson. That's nice to see. Bank of America fund manager survey showed cash holdings at their highest level since 2001. That's nice to see. Why is that one nice to see? Um, if we have cash, we can buy things. 
We could buy stocks and cars and houses. But in people's portfolios in particular, they could buy stocks. And at some point in time, we look around at each other and you go, Rob, you got a good stock idea? I'm like, yep. What is it? I think Google looks really, really attractive for a long-term patient investor. I told a burger of ours for taking action on any stocks I ever mentioned. Um, I own shares of Google. Disclosure. I'm trying to be as transparent as I can be. Today, we're seeing strength in materials, information, consumer discretionary and real estate. We're seeing the 10-year treasury play with 4%. If the 10-year treasury marches up to 5% in the next six months, I think stocks march lower. Because in the world of you have cash, what looks more attractive? Anytime the 10-year treasury is over 3.5%, it's a market that's more conducive for bonds to work. <laughs> Anytime the 10-year treasury is below 3.5%, it's an environment that's more conducive for stocks to work, and we're over 3.5%. Does that mean all or nothing? No, it does not mean all or nothing. Story that I hate. Inflation is causing users to buy now, pay later. I hate the buy now, pay later. I don't know why we're doing this. Pay later apps afford... It's a trap. It is a trap. And I'm so, I'm still upset. Every night I get to bed, I'm like, did Admiral Akbar really die? Why did he have to die? Couldn't have he gotten off the spaceship? He was my favorite Star Wars character as a child. More Americans are turning to buy now, pay later. And I don't like it. Um, if I were 20 years old and I'm barely scraping by, and Lollapalooza is coming up, and I'm like, "Ooh, I can buy these cool sunglasses now and pay for them later." It's like the the most, you know I just talked about the most loved character in my childhood was Admiral Akbar. The most hated was Wimpy, where he'd go up to Popeye and go, "I'd gladly pay for a hamburger on Thursday, but I get to eat it today." And you're like, "What's up with this mooch?" Oh gosh, I don't is mooch a bad word now? I don't know. I bet it is. I've been canceled. I'm sorry. What's up with this guy borrowing money for a hamburger? And he eats it now and he's going to pay you later. Like, what's what about on Thursday when he has to pay you back? Does What's he going to eat then? He's going to eat another hamburger. The dude's addicted to burgers. Anyhow, that's the way I see it. Um, But I, I, I get the bank's temptation and the credit card company's temptation to get you to buy now because it's a transaction buy now pay later is a relatively new but rapidly growing industry it's an option that's attractive for younger typically lower income consumers who don't either have a credit history or don't have a high enough credit score to qualify for traditional credit offerings that's where i think our society is a little messed up is that we're willing to buy stuff on credit cards and carry balances I I would do everything I can not to. And I understand baby needs to be fed. I understand, you know, cars need to be fixed. I would do everything not to carry a 20% interest rate on a credit card. For after paying a firm or Klarna, the interest rate that you're paying is 25 to 36%. So you just bought an Apple Watch, $800, and you're going to pay 36% more than me because I bought it in cash. And you bought it on buy now, pay later. You can't afford thirty six percent more difference. And yet we we're doing it. Delinquencies and charge offs are on the rise at buy now, pay later firms. It's eating into valuations. I hope it's a trend that just completely goes away. I hate it. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show. YouTube, Rob Black Show. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. Halloween candy is going to be more expensive this year. Your sugar is up about 17%. It makes sense that it's passed into the candy, right? How expensive? This is where the show can veer off into Loco Coco. Kind of land. 
um, about 13.1% 13 more expensive. The average household in America wants to spend roughly $30 on Halloween candy. But this year, Halloween candy could be closer to $35 due to the inflation. I was a little bit shocked looking at prices at the grocery store on various type of candy assortments. <clears throat> it's interesting because, you know, one thing I don't like about TikTok is how people try to give advice, whether it be on clothes, whether it be on belts, whether it be on investment terms. I don't like to over memeify everything. But Walmart sells a 160 piece fun size variety pack for $16.98. Last year, it was $2.24 less. Amazon's selling for $2 more a 120 piece variety pack of Hershey candy bars for $10.99, $2 more than last year. So last year, 120 piece variety pack would you could be gotten for nine dollars. This year it's almost eleven dollars. Sam's Club is selling a 450 piece variety pack of Mars candy bars for $26.98. And then I start going, okay. I give this math puzzle to my children. I'm like, which one should we buy? And is it the 450, the 120, or 160? It's price per ounce. Is it price per piece? It doesn't take that hard long to figure out. A 365 count assortment of Mars candy bars is currently listed on Amazon for $26.98, $5 more than a bag containing 250 pieces, making it the winner winner. Ding, 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 ding. Come on down. <laughs> Um, and that's why you have to learn math, Junior. So later in life, you can decide, is it 74 cents per piece of candy or 88 cents per piece of candy? And um, then there's the KGB. I know you're saying Putin and the KGB. Well, I explain to my children what communism is um, by explaining the KGB is the candy grabbers, grabbers bureau. And how they'll come around and just take away your candy and distribute it to other people. That's communism. Everyone deserves candy, but the KGB, they're the candy grabbers. And they decided they get an extra piece or two themselves. Speaking of an extra piece or two, meta. Hoo, 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 data started to come out on Horizon World. And it's not looking good for Mark Zuckerberg. Billions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars are being sunk into a project that now has... 200,000 users. So when you get your metaverse through Facebook, you go to what's called Horizon Worlds. 200,000 people are using it. Meta wanted 500,000 people at this time. So they're well behind expectations. Most users didn't return to Horizon after the first month on the platform, and the number of users has steadily declined since spring. This is not good news. I don't want to imagine Mark Zuckerberg is a dog, but if he is, he's going to get starting to get really testy and being backed into a corner of a failure. Zuckerberg unveiled the company's newest virtual reality headset, dubbed the MetaQuest Pro, coming out at a cost of $1,500. And when I hear the flagship product, Horizon World, isn't really doing all that in a bucket of chicken that's underperforming, internal expectations and Mark Zuckerberg's asking his employees start using it more at home, please. The people who are engineering the project aren't playing with it. It's like having a um, Porsche engineer ride bicycles. It's like, no, you're an engineer. You're supposed to know what you're, you're, you're making. But Meta is not performing up to par with its expectations. Let's talk average retirement. I love surveys because it, it always, it puts you as a benchmark against other people. Nine in 10 of us, our number one fear when surveyed is not having enough money for income and retirement. Many Americans aren't putting away enough for their future. In fact, 25% of Americans have no retirement savings at all. One in four people have no retirement savings at all. Now, when they turn 60, and they become politically 
how shall we say energized or charged you know give old people more money it's because they didn't save in their 20s 30s and 40s do we feel bad for people who don't save 401k balances by age group it's something you should pay attention to Someone under the age of 25 is saving less than $7,000, while someone between ages 55 and 64 are saving 232000 It's not enough. 10 to 20 times your salary is the number that I'm going to keep throwing down again and again and again and again. And if you don't work 10 to 20 times the salary of the person who's in your family working. Minimum. Dual incomes at age 65 is lovely, um, but you can't rely on it. So I'm getting to the point where I know there's be younger, faster, smarter. I look at Instagram and go, nope, don't want to post anything that looks like that. <clears throat> I show you a dollar sign, turn my back and I magically disappear, turn back and I'm a bear. Like, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, you can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black talking about how to become a millionaire, not so that you can drive nice cars, but so you can live on your income in retirement. Got a big event coming up in Palo Alto at the Elks Lodge, November 17. I am happy and thrilled. And I actually smiled yesterday thinking about the number of signups. They're large. You can find out more information at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. Use the code EVENT25 to waive the entry fee. I'm Rob Black.